Want to have a working spaceship in your game? Hello y bienvenidos. In this video we will create a flying vehicle by using the assets found in Kitbash Mission to Minerva Kit. You will learn how to use the Unreal Framework in order to board the ship and give it commands. To animate the ship, we will use a component-based approach mixed with some logic, instead of rigging it and animating each action. We will create the ship movement and mechanics inside blueprints. And not only that, we will polish set mechanics by using clever camera tricks and VFX. This tutorial is a great example of what you can achieve by using third-party assets. So if your goal is to become a better developer, I encourage you to watch until the end. With that said, let's start! Let's start by downloading the assets from the kitbash3d.com webpage. In my case, I'm going to use the Mission to Minerva one. You can browse around and see if there are more assets that you would want to use. But in this tutorial, the one that we're going to use is the Mission to Minerva one. And because there is a contest going on right now, price is zero, but if you're watching from the future, don't worry, we have some coupon codes for you that you can use in the entire store. So go to the 3D software and choose Unreal. Now in the render engine, choose native and then add it to the card. After that, go through the payout process, fill out your information and you will have got it. Once you have it, click on view my kits, select the one that you want, in my case mission to Minerva, and then download all the assets needed. Here you can choose also the platform again, and we are going to use, well, 1K, 2K, 4K, in our case 2K is more than, than enough. So download it, and after getting the files, you will know that inside them, there is a real project file. Make sure to click on the U project, and it's this icon, right click it and switch versions. Select the 5.0 if you have, it, I believe it comes in 4.26, but you can change it to 5.0 without problems. Now, let's open the project. Inside the project, search for the folder Mission to Minerva, go to Actors and search for the ship. And let's drag it to the map. And you will see that the meshes also need to appear. Now, this is the blueprint of the ship, which comes with meshes inside of it. I will open this blueprint using Ctrl E. And here in the viewport, we can see all the parts of the ship. So we can remove or add more if we like. Now, I don't want to mess around too much with this blueprint. So I'll duplicate it in one of the folders that I will create for this project. I'm calling my folder ship tutorial. And inside it, I will create the folder for the ship. Then again, I will go to the ships, well, to the actors and duplicate the ship to here. I'll press copy here. And now I should have my own blueprint, which I'm going to call blueprint ship. This is the blueprint that I will be modifying. So I will drag this to the map. I want to make this ship move around. So this ship will need to process some inputs. So it knows whenever I'm going up, down, forward, backward. Right. So right now, this ship is an actor. An actor is whatever that I can put inside a map. But I do need to send some input. So when an actor needs to process inputs, it's called a pound. And there is a class specifically made for that so i will open the ship and here you see the parent class is an actor i will go to the class settings parent class and search for pawn i'll compile and you will see that there is really not that much difference but under the hood there is a lot going on Why did I need for this ship to be a pawn 
because a pawn can be possessed. And this concept of possession is what dictates where does the input is going. There is a class called a player controller, which is the one that processes all the inputs from maybe the mouse, keyboards, gamepads. And this controller sends all the inputs to a pound class. That pound class will be able to determine, oh, you pressed forward, I should move forward. Right now, if I press play here, I will be a floating camera. But if we want to possess this ship, we can go to the details panel by selecting that ship. And here, let's just search. Oh, here it is. Auto possess player, player zero. That way we're going to auto possess this. And now I can see what the camera, uh, the pawn is actually seeing, which is not much. Because right now in my pawn, let me see if there is a camera. There isn't a camera. So let's click on the blueprint ship. Let's add a camera. And let's just search for camera. And I will put this camera right here. With that done, if we press play, now we can see where the actual camera is looking. And right now, I don't know why, but I have this thumbstick activated that is for mobile development. And I will get rid of those because we really don't need them for this tutorial. And I can get rid of those in the same window where I can add an input. And I want some input, so whenever I press the W key, I'm going forward. Whenever I press S, I'm going backwards. And maybe a Q and E could be used to go upwards, up or down, right? So let's open the project settings. If you do not have a tab here, you can go here in settings, project settings. Let's go to input. And first, I'll remove this. Always show touch interface. I don't really need it. So now when I press play, I don't have the touch controls. And again, in the project settings, I will add some action mappings and some axis map. Right now, I need movement. Whenever we are dealing with a continuous type of action, we need an axis map. This one will be forward. And the other one will be back. Now, I could create another axis mapping, but an axis mapping already has a value associated with a key. So right now, if I want to put my W key here, I can search for it or I can click on the keyboard and press W. Here in the scale, if I want a positive movement, I can leave it at one, but I can also add another key. So I'll press S here. And if I want to go backwards, I'll put a minus here. That way, we can change the scale of the movement that I want to do. An action mapping is different from an axis mapping because an action mapping is something that is more like a concrete action. For example, boarding the ship. So, so I'll just call this interact. And I will use the... The F key should be nice to interact with anything. And if that anything is a ship, then I will board the ship. Right. I need to move forward. I need to move to the right also. And I also need to move upwards. Just move up. Should be fine. Move right will be with the D key and the S key, well, the A key. And in the A key, this will be minus. Move up. Let me see how, how it's done in the, in the editor. In the editor, you can control your camera like an FPS. If you just hold the right click to look around. And also, 
you can move with W, S, A, and D. And you can use Q and E. E moves up, Q moves down. Also, you can press, I believe, C if you want to zoom, zoom out. Or, well, C or C, right? Z or, and C if you want to use another pronunciation. So it's easier to define. Okay, so E is up. So in the break settings, I'll put here E as a positive value and Q as a negative value. Now I have determined my inputs. So I need to program the actual movement of the ship. So let's open the ship. Let's go to the event graph where we, we will be adding the functionality of the ship. We have created the inputs, so I'll just right click and type move forward. I will be needing the axis event. The value, not so much. The value also comes with this event, so the event is the only thing that I need. And here you can see that difference between input axis and input actions. Here, if I just press type interact, action event, and here I only want to know if it is pressed or released. Here, this input will be constantly executing. If I'm not pressing any key, this axis value will be zero. And this is fine because the movement is something that we really need to check a lot of times or well every frame so in the move forward what i'm going to do is add some movement input here add movement input and you will see that the pound has that functionality if i wanted to add this in an actor this functionality will not exist i need a world direction for now let's just put x positive and connect the scale value here. Doing this, you would think that you would get a type of movement out of the, the bag, but if I press play and I try to move around, nothing happens. Nothing is happening because even though we are adding an input for movement, there is not any single line of code that is processing this input. Now I could process it myself by getting the input from the pound, get input set. No, this, that's not the one. Get last input, maybe I could get from there. But there is already a component that can help me. Let's just search for floating pound movement. Just like there is a movement component for characters, for flying stuff, there is already a floating pound movement. And this comes with some functionality that we'll be looking around. But for now, what I like to see is that this movement component will be processing this movement input. Now if I press play, I press W and I move forward. I press S and I move backwards. I also want to add some movement to the camera so I can look around. So again, I will not bore you with the actual inputs. I'll just pause the video and show you that I have added a lookup event, well, axis mapping, and here. I have selected in mouse, mouse, Y. This is the Y axis of the mouse. Here is look right, and I have selected the X axis of the mouse. If I needed to invert the controls, which I do like, here, the scale, I'll put in Y minus one. Now let's go back to the ship. Here in the ship, I do need to fix a little bit of my components, the positioning and the, well, the, Hierarchy. Here I will add a scene component, or maybe, yeah, 
what I will be adding is a collision component that I will be using for this ship. I do not want to rely on the collisions of the meshes. So here I will select the blueprint ship, click on that, and search for a box collision. And yeah, it's it's fine actually if it's a box because this ship is pretty much a box so here this will be need to be the root parent so i'm going to click on it hold the drag and drag it on top of geo components so he here it says drop here to make the box the new root so i will do just that now i have replaced what i already had but I do want all of the meshes to be inside of a scene component like before. So here I will add a scene component. And I'll select all the meshes of the ship. And almost done. Okay, with all the meshes selected, I will drag and drop them on the scene. That way, this scene is the parent of all these meshes. And I will call it Ship Scene Component. Perfect. Now, this box should reflect the size of this ship. So I will increase it. And let me find the values that work with this. The values that work for me was the box extent X2000 Y. Well, this number, a <laughs> thousand two hundred fifty, and inset the seven hundred. Now you will see that it's not matching. So we need to move this ship scene component and make it match. The numbers that work for me, and I have them copied, is these values: minus three hundred eighty, zero in y, and in say minus 710 that way we have good enough collision it doesn't need to be perfect and well we can tweak it later on now this is the collision that will be used whenever we are moving around so you must make sure that here with the box selected in the collision category of the details panel, in collision presets, you choose vehicle. This vehicle already comes with collision enabled and it's blocking all the channel. Now let's add the camera. Well, the camera movement. Here the camera, it's already here. But because I'm going to be controlling the movement of my camera, I always want my camera to look to the center. So I'm going to click on the box, select add a component, and here I will search for the spring arm. Here in the spring arm, I will connect my camera to it. And the way that I will do that is just drag and drop the camera on top of the, the spring arm. Also, in my camera, I need to reset the location. So I'll click on the arrow. And now I just need to click on the spring arm, which is here, and increase the target arm length. And well, the value that I that I am going to use is 5000. Now, if you press play and you see that the camera is colliding with something, is because we have this do collision test enabled. Right now, I'm just going to disable it. But later on, we will need these pieces of the, of the ship to not collide with that camera. And yeah, let's do that right now, actually. Because this do collision, do test collision here in the spring arm, is very useful whenever we are near another wall because it will collide with that so i'm going to select all my ship pieces 
go to the collision and here in block all dynamic i'm going to press custom and in the camera i'm going to put ignore let's compile let's save it and when we press play oh we're still colliding oh let me check the box collision maybe that's colliding also with the camera yep it is so custom camera ignore now let's press play oh man and it seems that we're colliding with the actual map so let's just move it up top and now if we press play we shouldn't have any trouble now let's move the camera around let's go to the event graph and just the same way that we added this here let's search for lookup and here i'll just add the controller pitch input and i'll connect it like this if i press play it will not work because i'm adding some controller input so here in the spring arm in the camera settings i need to check use bound control rotation let's press play and now if i move my camera up and down then it is working i will do the same thing for right to left but this time notice that i have used the add controller yo input so pitch input will make the camera look up and down and yo will look right and left now that my camera works properly what i want to do is that whenever i move forward i want my ship to go in that direction that is very simple to do here in the input axis forward what i will do is change this word direction to wherever my camera is pointing towards so here in the camera i will get the forward vector And let's just feed it to the add movement input. Now, whenever I, I press W, wherever I'm looking, I'm going in that same direction. Now, I need to change this logic for my, for my blueprint to work correctly in the long run now i'm getting the camera but actually remember that we were using a controller the controller rotation the camera is really not that uh, that of a good point of reference so it would be better to just use the controller rotation so let's get the control rotation and ask for its forward back and it will be the same right the, the result is the exact same but we are we are getting rid of some issues that we could encounter later on so i'll delete this and put this here now how would i handle the move forward excuse me the move to the right or up well it's also very simple i'll move my input action interact to the left side and here it is i have added the move right and you will see that the blueprints are really the same with only the big difference being instead of getting the forward vector the direction forward i'm getting the right vector which is a an arrow pointing to the right side of my blueprint. This is the move right. I do need to connect this scale value with these axis values, otherwise I will always be going to the right because this is one. Now the move up is also very similar, but instead of get right vector, here we have get up vector. And again, 
I do need to connect the axis value so it works properly. Now, if we compile and save and press play, if I press Q, I will move upward. Well, E, excuse me. If I press Q, I will go, go downwards. And W and D also works correctly. W always makes me go forward. And D always makes me go to the right. So whenever I'm pointing towards, then it's moving to the right from that point of reference. Now my ship is not turning around and we should really fix that. For that, we have a simple way of doing it. We can go to the class defaults here in use controller rotation yaw. Let's just click on it and also the pitch. With that, if we press play, whenever I move my mouse, then I'm getting the rotation that well our current camera is looking towards but this does seem like a believable type of implementation it's just like a super quick fix if you wanted to see how it looks like because this ship is massive then probably the rotation of the ship should also take a little bit of time and for that I'm going to use the tick. The tick is an event that runs every frame. Here we have the event tick. If I press print string just to print something on my screen like hello, I will see that this hello message is being printed every frame. So I want to align my ship towards wherever I'm looking to. So I have where is it? The forward vector here. So this is the actual vector that I want my ship to be looking towards. Now I can control the rotation of the ship by moving this ship scene component. So that's what I'm going to do. Here in the tick, I'm going to get this ship scene component and I will set the rotation. Here in set relative rotation no let's this is giving me like it says here rotate the world forward vector so i need to give it the world rotation let's connect the get control rotation because if i just transform it like that it, it will be the same actually so let's just connect the get control rotation here let's compile save and press play and you will see that now my ship is, well, rotating around. It's rotating a little bit weirdly because if I go to the viewport, this ship scene component has the pivot point here. So eventually my ship will be out of the box collision. And that is not really what, what I want to have. So I need to create another scene component. Let me just click on the box, add another scene component. Scene, and this will be called ship rotation scene component. Now I will drag my ship scene component and put it inside here. Now this ship rotation scene component is in in the actual middle so that is what i'm going to use to rotate my ship i'll replace it by just dragging and dropping on top of it oh whoop. where is it again here you need to drop it in this place and then you can replace it right so this is working correctly now but if we want to have a smoother rotation then we can use this node called interp which is the interpolation and yeah inter r for from rotation interp2 we need the current value which is well not this one this is the target value the current value is from this 
get world rotation like this this node will be trying to get to this target within using this delta time and using this interpolation speed if it's zero it jumps to the target so right now it's the same but if it's one it will get slower so now with this i have my ship rotating to where i'm looking Now, right now, it's a little bit too slow, but I will promote this to a variable, so I have a place where I can find this behavior very simple and very easy. And this will be ship rotation interp speed, just like this. Now, this ship rotation. I'm going to play around with it and I will tell you the value that I am satisfied with. And I'm going to go with 2.5. Yeah, I really like the snappiness, but it's not that fast action. I want to fix a little bit of the camera because right now my camera is pointing directly towards the back of the ship and doesn't really let me see anything. I will go to the viewport and here I have the spring arm. This spring arm, I cannot rotate it because right now it is following the con use pump control rotation. If I remove this, then for sure this gets rotated, but this is not what I, what I need right now. So what I can do is move around the camera. You can move it around here and rotate it a little bit. If you press play, now you are looking at the top side of the of the ship so it gives you a lot of more of the field of view that you can get whenever you use the, these types of vehicles and i already have some values here i'm going to just paste them first one is x oh why did i put x there ah this should be zero zero is fine and here in the y value is 1660. If I press play and I have more. And I can see also the back side of my ship just in case I need it. Now you can tweak these values to whatever you feel like it's better for you. But this is just a starting point. And while being in the subject of making the ship feel good, we can modify the actual movement of the ship here, we can change the max speed, for example, to be a little bit higher. We can change the acceleration and deceleration. So that way it feels snappier. Now the values that I will be using for this are for the max speed, 6000, for the acceleration, 1050, 100. And for this deceleration, 1000. I'm making it so the max speed is higher, but the acceleration is lower. This will make it so the start is a little bit um, slower. But if we manage to accelerate enough, we see that the deceleration is not holding us immediately in place. So we can drift around a little bit. And this will make it a lot more spacey, like less gravity or like the ship can slide around. Now, you can also tweak around this deceleration if you need it to be more snappier, then for sure you can change this. This turning point, as it says, makes the turns have less drift. If it's higher, more responsive. If it's lower, less responsive. But 8 was fine. Let's spice the movement a little bit by making the ship rotating forwards or backwards or right to left whenever we're moving in that direction. What we are going to do 
is mess around with this ship scene component. And we will rotate this whenever we're going forwards, if we are stopping, something like that. For that, I'm going to get the ship scene component. Let's just call the set relative rotation. And this will let me control it a little bit easier. For example, if I needed to tilt it to the, to the front, I put minus 20 in Y. And now my ship's always rotating 20 to the front. Now, I need to know where I'm looking and I need to know how fast am I going and, well, even better, which direction my, ve my velocity is going. So, to know the direction where I'm looking towards is this get control rotation. And I'm going to ask the get forward vector. Now, with this, I want it to compare it to where the direction of my velocity is going. If I press play, if I'm looking this way and I'm moving forwards, then both di directions match. So I want them to move, well, forward. And if it's backwards, then it should be a negative value. This can be solved with a dot product. A dot product is a ve vector operation that compares that direction and gives you a value between 1 and 0, well, between 1 and minus 1, depending on the relationship of both vectors. So here I need to get the velocity. And as a requirement for the dot product, in order for me to get a, an accurate value, I need to normalize this vector. Normalizing a vector means that if my velocity was like this, and let's say it's 300 in x and 200 in y, normalizing a vector will give me a value that whenever this is I want to know the magnitude of this vector that, for example, this may be, oh, this is 500 units of speed. If I wanted to normalize this, this would mean that this value would get transformed to 1, which means that this will become a vector that only gives us the direction. It's not important the actual value, you just know that the distance of it is 1. That way, I can compare this velocity with this control rotation. And let's just put a dot product. And I will print the value of the result just so you know what's happening. If I'm going forward, it means that the direction matches. So it will return a one value. If I'm going backwards, it will return a negative value. If I'm going side to side, it means that the vectors are perpendicular and it will return zero. So I will use this value of one in order to first split this and multiply it by this amount. And I will call this as a variable ship movement tilt amount. This is going to be a float. Let's just drag and drop it. Multiply this result and connect it to the Y value. Let's press play. And now when I'm moving forward, it's tilting upwards. And when I'm moving backwards, it's not tilting the, the way that I need. Oh, right now it's zero. Let's just put 20. And now it's tilting in an opposite direction. So I do need to negate this. Just multiply it by minus one. Yes. And I also need the right and left movement. It's the same. You just need to. Instead of getting the forward vector here, I will get the right vector. 
And again, dot product of this. And multiply by the ship movement tilt amount. And connect it to X. Excuse me, to, yeah, to X, which is the roll value. And there I have it. Now, it's not looking like much, but now it's just a matter of polishing the actual value in order to get something more cool. I'll just reorganize these notes a little bit. So this is how the notes would look after organizing. And we can also remove the print string now. Let's smooth out the tilt. We do need to use the same node here, but instead of a rotation, I just need a float. So F interp and F interp2. Again, I will replace this value. And the target value, as we know, is this one. This is the target. I'll do the same thing for the other value. And now we do need the delta time again. So I'll get it from here. I'm going to double click while the node is highlighted. So I can do something like this. Unconnect it to wherever it needs to be. Like that. The interp speed, the same as this one, I'm going to create a variable. And let's call it ship tilt interp speed. And it should be the same one for both of them. Let's compile and assign one for now. Perfect. Now what I need to set up is this current value. This current value needs to know which one is the current relative rotation. So I need to get the relative rotation. And from here, I need to split it. So the X, which is this one, which is this one, is connected here and the other one here. Now, let me clean up the notes a little bit. And while cleaning up the notes, I noticed that here, this X location is not correctly connected with this one. So let me invert it. Now it should be fine. Yeah, so it's always useful to to clean up a little bit of the logic so you don't have too much of spaghetti nose notes. And here I can duplicate the variable if I just want this to be a little bit more cleaner. So now let's try it. Let's compile and let's press play. Now if, when I move forward, I have that tilt. And when I move backward, I also get the tilt. And it's a lot smoother. Now, the tilt may be too much. So let me just reduce. It was from something I didn't clean up properly. Here in the tilt speed, it needs to be a little bit faster. I'll try with two. And in the tilt amount, I'll try with just 10. And now let's try it. Yeah, it's feeling good, actually. Maybe 10 also, it's a little bit too much. I'll try some values and I'll let you know which ones did I like. So for the ship tilt interp speed, I have gone with three. And for the ship movement tilt amount, I'm going with eight. Now, what I notice while testing is that even though, well, we're moving forward, our ship 
stays tilted. So I'm going to multiply this dot value by this axis value of the movement of move forward and move right. So that way I know whenever I am moving towards a side or not. So here I'll add another pin. This one is the x value, which is the roll. So this is left and right. Let's get move right. And I do need to take in account the fact that this get move right could return a negative value. So to account for that, I'll just do an absolute node, which will make it so this is always a positive value. I'll do the same for this one. Connect it, connect it like this, and this is the get move forward. And now I only want the axis value, so now it should be working correct. Let's press play, and whenever I'm moving forward, I'm tilting forward. Whenever I stop pressing W, then the tilt is gone. So that way, I can just get around the issue of, well, the ship always tilting forward. Now with this implementation, I noticed that whenever the velocity was still going strong, if I try to reverse it, first I tilt forward and then to the back. So this is really not desirable. So the way I'm going to correct this is by getting here the floating pound movement, and I'll just get the input directly from here. So I'll just get last input vector. And this actually solves a lot of stuff. This will be the direction that I will be using instead of the velocity. And because it's an input, and now I can remove the velocity. Because it's an input, I also do not need to check this. Because it will be zero if I'm not pressing anything. So I'll just remove the pin. So now let's check, let's check it out. And now it's working correctly. Yep. Perfect. And maybe I do want a little bit more of the tilt. Yeah. And the interrupt speed, I believe one now could, could feel a lot better. Yep, actually feels so much better this way. Perfect. Now let's get worried a little bit about the fact that this ship needs to land and it needs to take. Right now I can control the ship immediately, but I mean, it doesn't look very good if something like this happened, right? So yeah, you just don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is first, this ship will start in a landing position. So we need to create states for this ship to work. I'll create an enumerator. Oh, and let me remove this that I, I was testing stuff. Here in the ship, we have the, well, the blueprint of the ship. I'm going to right click, going to create an enumerator, blueprints, enumeration. This enumerator will be very helpful to determine the states that the ship can be in. So, ship states. An enumerator is just like um, a data asset that lets me hold text, but this text is associated with a number. So, zero is this first one. It's a good, a good practice if you put this new enumerator zero to none the next one will be um on land 
The next one would be taking off. The next one is flying. And at last, landing. And whenever you land, you are on land, and then the cycles well, is repeated. Okay, so let's save this. Let's go back to the blueprint and add a variable for the state of the ship. This will be, well, the ship state. And there it is. By default, it will be on land. Now, this part of the code, the rotation of the ship and the tilt, which I will put, I will select everything and press the letter C to create a comment. And this is the rotation of the ship mesh. Okay, so this only needs to happen if we are flying. So I'll add an if or a branch node. I'll get the state. You can get the state without having to look at this mes message if you just drag and drop with control being held in. If you want the set, you can drag and drop and then hold Alt. So I'll ask if this is equal to flying then do whatever we 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 want to do here in the in the tick otherwise it won't happen by default we are on land so my ship shouldn't be turning around it shouldn't be moving also but let's take some baby steps right so my ship my ship is landed Perfect. Right now it's not really on, on land, but I guess it's good enough. If I want this ship to stick to the ground, for example, I want it to align perfectly, I can make it snap to the ground if I select an object and then press the end key. And now it should be sticking to the ground. Yeah. Nicely done. Uh, right now, I have not saved this test map, so let's save it before Unreal crashes and then I'm in trouble. So I'll just create a new folder called Maps. This is my test map. And let's save it. And yeah, let's add a way to start flying. So whenever we are not flying, these movement inputs should not be working. This one that moved the camera, uh, th there is no problem about this. That's also a, a good comment. Will help you if you later return to this project. It will help you a lot to understand what, what you were doing. So these are the camera rotation inputs. These ones, I do need to modify. Here, I'm landed, but I'm still moving around. So what I'm going to do here is just check if we are, if we have landed, or if we are flying. So I will do the same here. And I can copy even the branch. So if I move forward or right or whatever, I should trigger a taking off sequence. Right now, my default state is on land. So if we are flying, only then I want to add this movement. I'll do the same thing. We are just reusing the logic that we already have created. I don't really want to complicate this too much. 
just like this. So now if we are landing, doesn't matter what happens, then we are still on the ground. Now, this means that if we want to take off, we could create another input, but uh, it, it would be in, in your pr player preferences that the less buttons that you have, the better. So in my case, whenever you add some input from here, I will make it so the ship takes off. So I'll create the takeoff custom event here. Custom event take off. And if we are in the in the on land state, then we will do something else. Now, because I'm going to do something like this, like oh, I'll create another branch. And if we are on land, we do something. If we are not on land, we do something else. You will see that you will get a lot of these events. And if we have more states or more logic that we want to add to each one of these states, you will get a lot of extra code that are only checking if the variable is a certain value. Whenever you're working with enumerators, what you can do to replace this is use a switch node. Switch on E ship states. And here I'm just going to connect it like this. Now, if my state is flying, this is the node that will be running. So I can get rid of it. Pretty cool, right? Now, if we are on land and this value is greater than one, or well, different than one, so not equal, these axis values not equal to zero, then I want to take off. Pretty simple. And if we're flying, I just want to use this same scale value that well, I have already here. This is the same value. I'm going to connect it like this so you know that it's the same value. Now I will proceed to copy and paste to the three other inputs. And you don't really need to see that. You already saw it once. So here we have it. Move right is the same exact logic that we have in the move forward. And the same goes with move up. You could decide to put this into a macro, but I'm not doing that because I only have these three input inputs for movement. So yeah, I, I'm not going to repeat it again. Okay, so now so this custom event takeoff will be getting called. Here it is, hello. If I press play, nothing's happening. I try to move and it says hello. So it is working. So as soon as we enter this takeoff, we need to change the value of the takeoff. And I will put this maybe here. Whenever you're working with a numerator, it will be very common that whenever this enumerator changes, something else maybe the look of the blueprint maybe some behavior inside the blueprint will also change so just in case when well, what i'm going to create is a function that will handle any of these changes so handle ship state change this is the state I'll connect it like this. As an input, I need to put the new state. So I will call this new state. And for now, I'll just leave it like that. Here in takeoff, the first thing that I need to do is handle the ship state change to put it in takeoff. And as 
you have seen here in takeoff nothing is happening with the input so i can rest easy knowing that nothing will get moved around and again i'll come i'll put a comment here and call it movement input perfect now we need to do something whenever we take off and that will be increasing the ship height so it's actually taking off and for that because i will also want to create an animation that makes these these things uh, hide hide the the actual connection and make this door close what i'm going to use is a timeline here i'll create a timeline and call it takeoff timeline or just t underscore takeoff i will want to play from the start and inside it what i want to do is let's open it create a new flow track the length will be one second because later on it will be easier to modify the the duration of it by changing the play rate so one second is more than enough it, it will become actually easier to modify stuff now this track i'm going to rename it and i'm going to call it vertical movement and add alpha at the end an alpha usually is a value that goes between zero and ones so i'll just create notes well keys for this to create a key you can right click and add key or hold control and click no i'll shift and click excuse me shift and click so let me delete this and the first key will be time zero value zero and the last key will be time one value one so now we have a value that is going from zero to one and that's exactly what we are going to use here in the takeoff now we have this movement vertical movement alpha and what we're going to do is set actor location we're gonna sweep it in case we are colliding with something it shouldn't really happen but just in case let's just sweep it this will make it so if it collides with something then the movement will try to accommodate itself or just stop and the new location will be the well the current location and we need to use this alpha for that here i'm going to use the node called lerp lerp is a linear interpolation we can use lerp yeah just let's just use lerp it's it's easier and we can control the movement in, inside the time so let's not worry too much about it we need an alpha here we have the alpha we need the starting position and the end position for that i'm going to calculate it before the timeline gets run so i'll need a variable for me for my start position start takeoff position and i'll just duplicate it and i'll create the end takeoff position The start takeoff position is very simple and I'll just set it. Here is get actor location. And the end position, it's the same. So I can I could easily use the start takeoff position plus 
a value here in C. So maybe it could be um, let's just put maybe 1000 and I will split this and because this value can also change I'm going to promote it to this float value well this float variable called C increase during take off just like that and this will be my end takeoff position Again, I'll try to arrange this in a way that it's easily, easily seen. And all these values that can be modified, I will make it so they are instance editable. Opening the eye is the same as going here and instance editable. Which at the same time, here if I click on the ship, you won't be able to see it. But after opening the eye and compiling, we can now see that C increased during takeoff. So we can modify the value per instance. So again, I uh, open the eye on this value that we should be able to modify. Perfect. So take off. Once I have the values, I will play this from the start and connect the start position and the end takeoff position. Now let's see what happens. I'll move around and immediately I'll go to the takeoff. And there I have my takeoff. If you want a smoother motion, you can go inside the timeline and modify the tangents. Select the keys and in tangents or key interpolation, just choose auto. Now you have a smoother type of, of movement. So yeah, it feels a lot smoother. You can also tweak everything like this. So maybe it takes a little bit more to get to the final position. Yeah, but I do, I do want a little bit of, of bounciness at the end. Yeah, maybe too much bounciness. This was fine, actually. Okay, if you are feeling that the takeoff was too fast and yeah it can happen what you can do here is before playing the actual takeoff you can modify the play rate of this timeline you just need to get the timeline get the takeoff and if you don't find it here for sure you can find it here in component and find the timeline t takeoff get it and set play rate play rate of one means the same it will play play at the same rate play rate of two is twice the speed so if you need it to be a little bit faster make it two i will put it at half the speed because i want it to be a little bit slower so now i have a slower take perfect After the takeoff, we want to be in control of the ship. So we want to pass to the next state, which is flying. So whenever this timeline is finished, what I'm going to do is handle ship state change and change it to flying. That way, whenever we take off, it's taken off and now we are flying immediately. So everything that I had before works correct pretty nice right now we should implement the the landing and the landing is a little bit more trickier because i don't want to create a button for landing i just want to be near something to land for example like this and immediately know that i need to land so I can solve this again in a multiple different ways. And I'm going to opt with the fact that I'll do a line trace towards the ground to check. To check if I'm near the ground. If I'm near enough, 
then for sure I'll try to land. If I'm not, then I'll keep flying. Another way to solve the problem is that whenever my box collision touches the ground, then I can immediately trigger the the, the landing. So I tested around here in my box. I made so I'm, I'm not hiding it in the game. And I noticed something that we are rotating, but my box is not following me. And I want to change that. The, the collision should be, should be following us. So I'll go to the class defaults here, use controller Yo. And now it should be working correctly. Perfect. Now, I don't want this to follow my pitch. Yeah, the pitch, this one. Because otherwise, it could lead to some problems when we are interacting with the ground. And yeah, it's really not needed. If you want to see the problems, I can activate it for you. And see what's happening. Yeah, this. So yeah, I want to avoid most of those problems. Now, the thing about activating this is that whenever we are landed, it's still following my rotation. And that should not be it. So I'll just deactivate it and only activate it whenever I really need to. Here in the handle ship state change, what I'm going to do is here, switch and whenever I'm on land this uh, how is it called it's called use controller rotation yo set use controller rotation yo on land it will be false on takeoff it will be false and flying it will be true oops and landing, well, you guessed it, it will be false. Now we have it like we had it before. I'm gonna move around and then we got this actual movement. And yeah, to, to avoid this, the issue of, of of that, uh, we later on we will see what what we can add to the mix. Another thing that I noticed, just showing you that, is that I'm losing the smooth rotation of my ship that I had before. I am getting the tilt, so that's at least good. But I have lost the rotation, the overall rotation. Let's go to the event graph and see what's happening. Here, the rotation of the ship mesh, we have this interpolation, but the current one will be the world rotation of this ship rotating, uh, ship rotation scene component. Now, this ship rotation is actually a child of this box, which I should rename to a ship collision. So because now my box is rotating with the with the controller rotation yaw, then it's affecting all of the components that are under it. So a way we can um, bypass that is by saving this get world rotation in another value and updating that value well whenever we like it. Here the target rotation is fine, but I will need to create a new variable for the current one. And I'm calling it current ship rotation. Now to make it work, well, I can delete this. And I need to save this current ship rotation. So I'll just put it here. Set. 
connect it like this. And the current ship rotation will be connected to the set world rotation. Now, I want to set this value and a starting value. For now, I will set it up in the begin play. So, current ship rotation will be the ship rotation get world rotation. I should do this whenever I possess this this ship. So whenever I get inside it, the value gets updated. So right now it's in be the begin play. We press play. We are moving around. And now my rotation is smooth again. And you can see that the box is actually giving me the place that my ship will be. But the actual mesh doesn't really need to show that. It can show us the actual movement and tilt that we are adding for an aesthetic effect. Now, as I said, instead of this being in the beginning play, I want it to be on possess. And if you don't have it here, functions, let's search. Here's unpossessed. Here's possessed. And let me copy. Well, let me just cut the code and put it here. For sure, the, this will get run whenever I possess this. So here it is. Hello. So that seems to be working. Yeah, pretty nice. So the landing will be through not the collision because it can get very buggy, but through a line trace. So I need to know when my ship is near the ground. For that, I'm going to use also the tick. And here in the possess, I'll put update. The ship rotation on possession. Oh, well, let's just make it even more clear. When you board the ship, there it goes. Here in the tick, I want to only land when I'm flying. So, this is taking care of the rotation of the mesh. I'm going to create a sequence and this next part will take care of the actual um, landing of the mesh. So instead of using a line trace, I will do a box trace here, box trace, and it will be by channel. Box trace, as it says in the name, we are tracing a box. We need to put a start location, will be my ship. Actor location, get actor location. And I'll add some C value, maybe minus uh, 500. And put it to the end. So we have something like this. The orientation is fine like this. The half size should be the same size of my ship. For now, let's just put 50. And the trace channel visibility is fine for one frame also. So we can see what's happening. I'll press play. I'll take off. And then whenever I'm flying, the line trace should be firing. Why is it not firing? Half size. Oh, it may be too little. Could be. Let's just put for now, just so I can see something, right? Yeah, and there it is. Yeah, it, it was too little. <laughs> too, too small. The box was too small. I'll just bump it up to maybe 
300 and 300. Yeah, 300 in every way possible. I will return this to oh, minus a thousand and play, press play again. Done. So there I have my box. Right now it's not, not colliding with anything. But if I go downwards, then here, whenever it touches, then I want to collide with that thing. Now, I only want to land on um, a plane surface, right? So what I'm going to do is, oh, let's not complicate it. Yeah, if, if you wanted to make really sure that you can only land on something that is on the same level, what you can do is something like this, that I would imagine that. I don't want to make this too long. It's just landing. Let's say that you already have the box trace here. You collided here. Now you can do line traces. Maybe from here. Maybe from here. From here. And from the other side. Now you will need to save these values. And if they are between the required um level let's say that this one was maybe 10 in set like c 10 here is 0 this is 7 this is maybe 15 and you just say oh if these are between 0 and 15 then for sure i will consider it a, a landing landing option a landing that is flat. Then you can go ahead and land it. My implementation will be a lot more simple, but we can get the ship collision box. Get here, get half size. Oh, the box tent is, is the half size. Get scale box tent, connect it, and now. Let's see what happens. I'm oh I move my and now here I can see when should I start going downwards. So I believe it's fine actually. For me it's it's fine. It's fine like this. The orientation of the box should really depend on the um, forward direct direction of my ship collision box so let's just get forward vector put it in the orientation and let's make my ship take off from from land again so now my trace really depends on the orientation of my box so when this collides with thing, what I want to know is that it's actually land. Now, instead of using the visibility channel, what you can do is here in the project settings, go to collision and create your own trace channel. For example, ship land channel. For now, it will be block. And let's say that I do not want to land on top of a cube here. You can change the, the collision. Right now, I'm colliding. But here in my ship, I'm using the ship land. And in my cube, I can go and in collision presets, put custom, and in ship land, I'll just ignore it. I'll just press play. And now I can collide with the ground. 
but I'm not colliding with the actual cube. So that way I can avoid landing on certain certain spaces, right? For now, I'll just use the visibility channel and remove my trace channel. Okay, so this box trace will let me land. And for that, I need to check. If this is true, then I will go to landing. And to go to landing, well, I can create like the same, like take, take off, but another custom event. Let's call land. I will change the state to landing. Oh, well, this should be called a start landing. And I do need to call it here. That way, whenever we start landing, we are going to lose the ability to move our ship and the ship will, will, will stop adjusting itself. Although I do want my ship to adjust itself while, while we are landing right could be could be very nice because if we're landing oh right now i immediately collided with that <laughs> let me just move this around and maybe the in the c value should be a little bit higher so i don't land immediately with the ground right so now I'm looking for the collision. Here is the collision. Yeah, and my rotation should probably get fixed. So this is going to try to land. Now in the tick, um, I will not worry about this part right now. What I want is to actually land. So I'll do the same that I did here, like takeoff. I need a start position and an end position. And I could change this or I could just reuse it. For example, the start is the same. And the end, now this is a little bit different because I need to collide with something right so here this end take of position i will use the same value that i get from this trace box trace by channel here i'll break the hit result i'll get the location of the hit and i will save it as an end position location and now i can click here again to to make it a little bit smaller just like that so here i have the end position and i should probably put takeoff or land or land because i don't really need these variables at the same time you're either landing or you're either taking off so here I have the end takeoff or land position. We start the landing. We change to the landed state. And here we have the start position. We need to do the same thing. But just for now, I'm not going to use the same timeline because it could change. Could it? Could it change? Uh, let's try to reuse it, and if we need to create another one, we can do, do so. Here I'll just put reverse. Oh, and here I can change the play rate if I'm landing too quickly or too, or too slowly. So I'll put reverse from end. 
compile, save, and I'll press play. So now I'm checking for the landing, and whenever I start landing, oh, I'm going the reverse position. Okay, so maybe um, instead of reversing it, well, if it means we are reversing stuff, then this needs to be the end position, and this needs to be the start. Now, why am I getting the flying state? Well, because whenever this takeoff is finished, we are entering flying. But I need to check the direction. I'll put an equal because it can be forwards. And if it is forwards, then I want to go to flying. And if it is backwards, then I want to go to on land. So here I can switch. And whenever it is forwards, we go flying. And whenever it is backwards, we go back. Well, not flying um, on land. That's, that's what I wanted to say. Compile, save, and let's try it now. We go flying, perfect. We try to crash. And then we are now landed. And now we can fly again. Now we do need to update this um, behavior. One, one thing that I, I want to change is that if we're going too fast, like at this speed, I should not be able to land, right? So here, I will only run this if my velocity, let's get the velocity. Let's get the length so we get the speed. So if my speed is less than a value that I can determine later, then needed speed for landing. Oh, max speed for landing. If this is less than the max speed for landing, then for sure. Try to land. And I don't know how much speed can I get, so I'll create a print node and connect this vector length just so I know how much speed usually are we talking about. So here's zero. Top speed could be 6,000. Perfect. And landing speed could be. Yeah, maybe a thousand, maybe less. Yeah, less than a thousand. For now, that seems like a reasonable value. So here, thousand. Compile again. This is something that can be changed. So I'll open its eye. And now we have something that can run for the landing. We need to update the rotation though. So it's. It, it looks fine, right? So here I'm not landing. I could even crash. But whenever we are moving slowly, then for sure I can land. Now for this, I will be using the same thing here, but changing it a little bit. So this again, I would need to create another if, and uh, I don't want to complicate myself too much with it. So I'll again use a switch. This is when it's flying, so let's connect it like this and fly. Now, when we are landing, I do not want to run this sequence. I just only want to run the code of the rotation of the ship for mesh. Now let's connect it like this. Let's press play and let's see what problems arise. Now it is working, but it is working with my mouse. So for now, well, 
what I do need to do is maybe um, make it so these values are updated to, to the normal ones. Or it, I think it would be better to just use the time timeline and create another one. Well, I try to reuse it. I did try. So yeah, let's just not use this approach. Now that I think it better, it's not going to work that well. So here, and yeah, it sounds like I didn't know how to do it because I didn't know how to do it. I wanted to add this part especially the rotation and the making the ship feel better at, at last minute so yeah i'm i'm using it as a teachable experience that you can learn from so i'm going to yeah not use this i mean i'll just need to delete that maybe later on we can use that here let's not use this let's just Duplicate this. And here, this is a new timeline. This is T. Um, land. Here I need to replace it by T. Land. Perfect. And well, this gives us more control about how we want the, the timeline to, to play. Right? Now, again, I need to reverse this. This is the start location, so. Um, yeah, this is the start. This is the end. Where is my box trace? This is the end. Let's go back to the landing. We engage landing. We set up our variables. We set up the timeline play rate. And here we're playing from start. We have a start point, we have an end point. We set the actor location and at the end we click on land. Now let's search if it is working correctly. Well, let's test. Yeah, it is landing. Yeah, it, it is perfect. It, it is the same exact thing that we were doing here, but with a new timeline. Here, what I'm going to do is not only set up this vertical movement, but also set up the rotation that I need to recover that I got from here. So here, this set world rotation needs to be reset, right? So. It's better to just test it without the transition and then we add the smoothness of a little animation through the time. So this is the code that I'm using to test that the values will be resetted. First, I'm resetting the world rotation of the ship of the ship rotation. And I need a world rotation that it is pointing in the correct direction. And that is the ship collision box. That is the component that will provide me with the correct rotation. As you can see, the ship is always looking towards, well, the box is always looking towards wherever I want to be. So it is working correctly. Here in the ship scene component, I'm only using the relative rotation so I can reset it easily. So these are the two values that I need to change. Now, because I need to change these values, I do need to save them somewhere. So here, I'll get the world rotation and save it. Um, let's promote it to a variable. Start ship land rotation and save it again i'll make some space here because we're going to do the alpha stuff again so we need a start and an end the end is very clear this is the end this is the value that i want to have as an end and here 
the end also is very clear is zero zero so again i only need to save the current relative rotation and promote it to a variable nope let's get the relative rotation which is this one and promote it to a variable just like this and this will be the start ship land relative rotation there we have it now we can do the actual animation and i will do it the same way i'll move this here so i have a little bit more space and after setting up the actor location i will create a new track this will be at flow track the ship rotation alpha Again, this is going to go from 0 to 1. So 0, 0, 1, 1. And now in the event graph, where's my landing? Here it is. Now I have this ship rotation alpha. I'm going to ask a lerp for a rotator. The B value which is the target is this one alpha is this one and the start location is well this is start ship land rotation i'll connect it like this and this other one is the same a value is the relative the b value is zero and the alpha will be that ship rotation up. With this in place, now I should be able to have something a lot better. And let me just modify the pins this way so it's not that messy. Right, so let's press play. I'll move around. I'll try to, to land. And whenever I land, this happens. Yeah, and I believe it should be a little bit more higher the landing actually. Yeah, so it that should be very fast. This part, so maybe the landing can stop. Well, the rotation can get the one value at zero point three, and let's make it a little bit more smooth. Auto, just like that. Let's test it out. Yep, yep, yep. Works a lot better. And yeah, the landing should be a little bit higher now that I am testing it. So, where did I put it? Oh, I didn't put it in any variable. That's a no no. Here it is. I'll just split it and instead of just putting minus here, I'll just put subtract, split this and convert this to a variable called um, needed height to start landing. This will be 1,500. And again, I should open the eye. So we know that that is a variable that we can modify as a user. Great. Now my ship has the ability to land. Excellent. Do we need to clean something here? Maybe this part a little bit, right? But now we have the animation 
of the ship landing and the ship taking off. Now we have the ship working correctly, right? And let me put a little commentary box here. And here I'll put check if we should land. Just like this. Great. And I'll select both of these commentary and here show bubble when zoom. So we know at a glance what's happening with this. So the ship's feeling great, actually. And let me also remove that box. Let's click on the ship box collision and enable the hidden in game. Right. Now we want the ship to feel actually alive. Oh, and also we have that phrase. Um, instead of for one frame, none. Right. Okay, so again, we have the, fi the ship feeling very nice. What I want to do now is have the ability to, well, move the parts inside the ship with my movement. Let's start with the takeoff, which should move that, uh, the, the, this back door. And also, if I can, these, uh, meshes right something like maybe this or maybe just hide them like this right something something pretty cool right let's start with the door these are easier to do so maybe i can even just do a simple overview on it the video is getting longer as it usually is so let's start with that. We will go to the takeoff. And yeah, I've been messing around with the values. Here in the height for landing, this is a good value, <laughs> 1,100. Okay, here we are in the takeoff. During the takeoff, we have the position of the ship. And let me put the landing a little bit further down the line and here we're setting up the actor location we need to set up also the location for this type of mesh right so this this mesh right now as it is if i want to rotate it then it's not in the correct pivot. Now we could modify the mesh, but if you're use, using this mesh in other places, then whenever you modify the pivot, it will affect all instances of the mesh. So uh, for me, it was a little bit of an overkill. Instead of that, what I'm going to do is here, select the ship scene component, add another scene component. And this scene component will be the um, backdoor um, backdoor scene scene component. I will move it to where the backdoor is, right here, and I'll try to make it so it's where it should be rotated. Like, yeah, here seems like a good place. I really don't know. But we will discover it together. Select the mesh and drag and drop it on top of the backdoor. Now the backdoor, if we rotate it, it's like it became its pivot point. And 
Yeah, I believe it's it's good enough. Let's control C. Let's remove the back door. And let's put it a little bit inside here. Just so it's actually on the inside of the hinge. Yeah. Now let's do it again. Vehicle cargo ship. Put it here. And rotate the cargo door. And I connected something else. Where is my door? Oh, here it is. I'll put it in the back door again. Rotate it. And now it's a lot better. Yes, it's a lot, a lot better. Great. So now zero rotation means that it's in the open position. And let's see what is the closed position. Um, I need to get rid of this snapping. So this is the closed position. This is minus 54, right? Something like that. So let's click on the back door and return to the normal position. We will go again to my event graph. In the takeoff, I'll double click, I create another track, add a flow track, and this will be the door, well, the back door, movement, or can be animation, alt. And again, from 0 to 1, everything always from 0 to 1. Let's go back here. We have the backdoor alpha, and now we can mess around with this backdoor. Set relative rotation. And if I remember correctly, this rotation was in the y axis. Again, lerp here. Alpha is this one, zero is the normal value. The target value is this one. Now let's check it out. Ah, pretty cool, right? If I need it to be faster, again, we can modify this. The time can be earlier. Yeah, now it's looking pretty cool. We do need to move our stuff here. Uh, where is it? The viewport. This is something that should get inside of the actual door. Right now, if I connect it to my back door, it will move the same way, but that needs to retract a little bit. So again, I will do the same thing that I did for, for this back door. So I'll create... I, I'll click on the parent component, add a new scene. Uh, that's not how you write scene. This is a scene component. Position it wherever I think the actual mesh should rotate or move. And the, where is my scene again? I'll reset the location. Now it's in the correct place. And I will move it where it should be, where it makes more sense, at least to me. Now, it would be a good idea that whenever I modify, for example, the X value, it would mean that we are uh, moving it inside the, the actual the actual door, right? So to do something like that, what I will need to do is first position this correctly. Yeah, maybe there could be fine. And now rotate it so the X value it's is looking a little bit aligned with the with the rotation of my
of my door. Yes, something like that. Now, I'm going to put my door inside that scene. Well, not the door, but the... How is it called? The ramp. And this will be the ramp scene component. And now whenever this ramp moves, where's my scene component here? If I move it in X, then it means I'm just sliding it forward or back. Ah, pretty cool, right? So again, that's in X. So the normal value will be this one. And oh, everything changes here. Hmm. I could also move this. If I just modify the X value, I believe it should be fine. Right? Yeah. Yeah, because it's in the correct rotation. Yeah, so let's modify this actually. It starts as, as this. So again, let's go to my event graph. Here, we need the not the scene component. I will be using the actual mesh that is in the correct space now that it's inside my other scene component. And here, let's put set location. Set relative location. And let's just split. I only want to modify the X. So from here, I'll get the relative location. And connect the Y and the C. As I said, I only want to modify the X. So here, I'll add a LERP node. The alpha could be the same alpha of the door actually or could be something that plays a little bit faster just so we have a little more control this new track will be called ramp animation out we start at zero and at 0 0.3 maybe the value will be 1. It, it means that it's ended its animation. So now with this alpha, I'll connect it to here. The start position is this one. And I'll get the new end position. If I modify the x value, this should be the new end position, which is 100. Okay, so let's go back to the bend graph. This is fun. Compile, save it, play it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, pretty cool. We did need to do something about the these two meshes. I'll try to get around it by just attaching it to this mesh and when they rotate hopefully this doesn't overlap my, my mesh so hopefully we don't have that problem so i'll look for them and add them to the current backdoor mesh now when the backdoor here rotates it rotates with these meshes and i believe they fit actually pretty good yeah let's see what happens we press play oh pretty nice pretty pretty nice with this we only need to make those things elevate these little Legs. How how is it being called? Um, what is it? Yeah, legs. So we have this start position, 
and we want to put them here because the only movement that this will do is just go up what i'll be doing is i'll get the ship scene i will get well i'm clicking on the ship scene i'm adding a new scene component and that's not how you type scene here it is and this will be the legs Scene component. This Lexing co component, I just reset the the location and well the rotation can also be resetted. I will put them here. Oops. Yeah, perfect. And now what I'm going to do is connect them or oh, right now it's in 300 but if it was in at zero yeah i'll leave it at, i'll leave it at zero actually yeah yeah yeah. with this at zero zero i'm going to select all the legs and drag them on top of the scene component now whenever my scene goes up by 200 which is exactly what i need Everything goes up by 200. And now it's just a matter of doing the same thing that we have been doing. We enter the time lap, the timeline, create another track, float track. This will be the legs. And in alpha. And again, this could probably take a little more time. So maybe 0 0.5. And the value is 1. Here. Let's go back to the event graph. We do the same exact thing that we have been doing before. Set relative location. And the new location is a lerp. Uh, but not a vector actually. We just want, let's split it. We just want the C location because otherwise that it stays at zero, it's fine. So here, lerp. The alpha is the one that we just created. And at the start is zero, at the end should be. 200. Yep. And that's exactly how we want it to work. Now, to land, we just need to change uh, not that much stuff, actually. It will be the same behavior, but doing it in this other timeline. So I don't want to bore you with the same thing over and over again because you already know the process. It's the same thing. And it really is just as easy as taking whatever we added here, copying it. Here is my landing. Pasting it here. And switching the values, right? This one will be on top and now here will be zero i'll copy this one this will be a hundred and paste the new one here and the same but invert now it's just a matter of creating the 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 curves for that the vector is from zero to one I'll create the next one. The ramp, instead of animating it earlier, I will wait for the back door to be at this point of its animation to then make it so the ramp appears. And the next one, the legs, I do want it to appear immediately, like very fast. At the 0 0.4 time, it will appear. 
So now with my curves created, it's just a matter of connecting the alphas to where they belong. This is the back door, this is the ramp, and these are the legs. So let's test it. That works. Now I'll try to park. And now I have it. Now if I want a, a smoother uh, door animation, maybe, what I could do is... Uh, where's my timeline? The door, the back door. Make it so it ends at the 0 0.7 time. So immediately after it, it ends, the ramp appears. Yeah, and a little bit of overlap would be nice. So maybe not 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So some overlap happens. Make it feel a lot more natural. Great, let's land. Yeah, nice one. Pretty cool, right? Now let's go back to the ship. Let's save everything that we have. And well, let's add some comments. Let's. This is the takeoff. behavior and the other one is the start landing behavior right and we can put them together just like that oh here's a typo before continuing with the next part that will be animating the actual engines I noticed that there was a little bug with how I'm handling the, the rotation right now. Look at it. That, that's the bug. The way to solve it is that instead of just saving or updating the current ship rotation whenever we possess the ship, what we can do, that it's even better, it's go to the, oh, what is it? Handle ship state change. And whenever we are taking off, there we are going to update the ship rotation. That way, there won't be any more issues about the weird rotation happening after liftoff. Yeah, that's cool. Now, I want to move these meshes so they are pointing to the correct direction. Right now, the rotation zero, it's not really my taste, if you can call it that. Because if it's zero, then they should be like this, <laughs> right? Because I'm not moving. There is no velocity, so maybe I can change it to be like that. Now, when we are moving forward, this needs to move to certain degrees. And whenever we are moving side to side, I want to be able to maybe add some rotation like this. Maybe. I really don't want to add too much, too much math in order for, oh, you are rotating then. For sure, I will make it so this one points this way and this one points the other way. That way, whenever you are uh, rotating, maybe to this side, that happens, right? But I do need to cover a way to do this type of movement. So that's what I will add. And for that, you guessed it, we will be needing more of my scene components that way the zero rotation of this one is really this part like this and whenever we rotate our our engines side to side then 
they are looking towards the right direction. So again, let's go to my chip sync component. We'll create another sync component here. Here it is. And I will try to put it where one of the engines are. Just like this. And I went too much. Yeah. Uh, th that's actually a good place. Now, again, as I told you, I want the zero rotation to be pointing downwards. So this one, I'll have to reset it. Oh, what did I reset? Oh, it's okay. Here is my scene. I will call it raster and right because we need to look at the x axis. Usually the forward x is the forward vector. Thruster, right, back. Sync component. Now I need to rotate this in order to be aligned with the rotation of my thruster. That way, whenever we put this thruster inside the scene, Right now, my scene has this rotation. If we put it back to zero. Oh, I click something else. <laughs> Excuse me. If we move it around. Oh, I connected something else. My bad. That was not the thruster. This is the thruster. I... Okay. Now I did add the thruster. And when I reset this rotation, it should be looking downward. If it isn't for some reason, then let's make sure that it is. We can modify it a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Or just click on the mesh and modify it here. You can use the left or right perspective. Uh, I'll use the right one. And I want to rotate it this way. I'll just put 30 here. Yeah, 30 is fine. Okay, let's go back to the perspective. And now, if I want my thruster to point in the normal direction, it will be, well, 30 to one side. Well, minus 30 in this case. And that's how we have it now. Pretty cool. Now, I need to do the same step for the for the other ones, right? So I do need to duplicate the thruster. Yeah, maybe duplicating will be a good idea. Control D. I have the new thruster here. And in the location in X, instead of this being minus, I will put it in positive and that's not what I was looking for. I was looking for the Y, actually. I just minus 870. This should make it so it is in the correct place. And then I'll attach this one to the thruster right back. And this should be left back. And it's I believe it's back left makes more grammatical sense, right? So back. Right. Now that this is connected, if I put it here at zero, then I'm getting the transformation that I want. And I'll do the same thing for these other two. One thing to take in consideration when positioning these scene components is that you put them inside of this uh, black ring 
That way, when you move them around, you have a little bit of wiggle if you want to make this rotation here. Yeah, that's a thing that uh, it would be a good idea to take in consideration. So now I, now I have added the, the scene components and I also went and fixed the back ones because they were not rotating correctly. Where is one of them? Yeah, I put it inside the ring. That way, now it gives me a lot more, more freedom. Yeah, so these are the values if you would like to use them. But just calculate it by, by the eye. Okay, so now we have the scene components for this type of thrusters. So let's start moving them. Let me compile and save, and let's go to the event graph. In the event graph, because these engines will be updated constantly, we also need to put them in the actual tick. Uh, we're, not, we're not going to be checking this. So uh, before checking if we want to land, I want to make sure that my thrusters are correctly positioned. Now, these thrusters will also be able to move during maybe when we are landing, when they're on takeoff. Yeah, they should be able to move. So instead of just adding a new sequence, I'll just connect it here. And this will be done. I'll create another sequence here. So before we check everything, we will run the code to update the thruster position. So let's again create the animation without those smooth values. So what I'm going to do is, for example, get the thruster back right. Let's set it. Set the relative rotation. And I'm going to get the value of the input of moving forward. Here it is. Now, whenever I want to move forward, I'm going to split this. And the move forward, I can plug it immediately to the pitch. Because here in the in the viewport, if I see the pitch is the value that is moving. And the maximum volume that I'm going to give it is minus 30. Okay, so again, this should be um, a value that I can modify later. So here, I'll multiply and I'll multiply it by minus 30. So I'll promote this to a variable, which is the range, um, forward range. Of thruster. And I also need the side, side range of thrust. This is going to be 30. And this is going to be 10. Okay. And for now, let's just remove the pin. Let's connect this to this one. And we can try it. We can see what's happening. If we move forwards, it moves to the back. If we move backwards, it moves to the front. So it's inverted. Here, let's just multiply it by minus 1. And now it should be fine, actually. Side to side, we do need to get right. Uh, move right. There it is. Again, 
multiply it. I don't know if I need to inverse invert this, but just in case, multiply it by the range of this side. Thruster arm. Let's see if the x value is the one that I'm looking for. Yeah, and it is. So yeah, I don't need to negate it. But now I do have it. Let's see what we do here. Now, I can remove this pin. These same logics should apply to the other thruster. So I'll get the back left. I'll get the front right and the front left. And I'll connect the four of them to this node. Just like this. Let's press play. And yeah. These four directions, because we are using the same position, or well, we duplicated the same scene location, we can apply the same logic to the four of them. Now, I shouldn't be able to move them while I'm uh, staying in place. So, Maybe I will want to add this to this other sequence. Just like this. And it's time to make the movement smoother. So I will put this a little bit downwards. I want this to be at the bottom. And I want this to be in the middle. And I'll move the pin. The pins around yes so it's not tangled anymore so here i will change the rotation of well all my thrusters but i need to do it in a way that it's smooth so again i will be using the interp two nodes so here interpolation the current value is um, the current relative rotation of i can choose one of them it will be the same for all of them so get relative rotation and so just so i don't need to create two of these what i will do uh, let's just remember that this is the y and this is the x. I will recombine the pins here. Interp2. The current one is well. Any, any one of these will do the trick. The target one, I will need to make it. Or I'll, I can just split it. X is this one. Y is this one. Delta time, we already know. It comes from the tick. And the interrupt speed, for now, I'll put it at 1. So now, when I'm not flying, I cannot move them. But whenever I start flying, then I can move them. Now, it's taking a little bit of time for them to react. So maybe I'll just put it, bump it to 3. And again, this is a variable that I should be able to move and tweak. So I will call it thruster movement inter speed. And let me check which value works the best for me. Yeah, 3 is working pretty well. You can check it out. I do need to move those thrusters whenever I, I'm on the taking off and landing but for now they are feeling pretty pretty nice let's just land and we can see the normal value let's create a little comment box call it thruster movement And in this case, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to use the 
the usual alpha that I always do. Here in the takeoff, I want them to start, and here I will create a track. Um, a vector track, just so we know how to use it. This will be the thruster rotation value. Now, there is no rotation here, and I believe I only want to modify the. Is it the x value? I believe. Maybe. Yeah, no, it's the y value, only the y value. So, yeah, I really don't need a vector. Let's just delete it and add another flow track. Let's call it raster location. Oh, well, rotation y rotation. At the start, this is going to be zero. And the value will be minus 30. The next value will be at time 0 0.4. And the value will be 0. Let's compile. Let's save. And in the event graph, I can use the same node that I use here. Put it at the end and connect this new rotation. Well, split it and the Y connect it to the thruster Y rotation. Now, with this, let's compile save and let's see how the takeoff take looks. Yeah, pretty nice. And now, then it's working correct. Now, the other thing that I need to add is the actual landing. For the landing, uh, what I'm going to do is, well, here is my landing. Let's open it. First, I want my ship to land faster. So vertical movement alpha, I need, I need it to land in the value, excuse me, in the time 0 0.8. At 0 0.8, also the back door opens. And well, the ramp also opens. And I wanted to feel more mechanized, so I will put the timing exactly at 0 0.8. So here I'll add another float track. This will be my. How did I call it? The thruster Y rotation and at the time one i want the value to be minus 30. to return to the resting position uh, so to speak at time 0 0.8 which is when the when the ship already landed i want the value to be zero and yeah, that's pretty much it. I want it to be zero almost immediately. So here I'm getting off the off the ground. I'm going to make a landing. And whenever I land completely, I just noticed that I didn't connect it to anything here. So let me just copy and paste this relative rotation and connect the Y to the rasters. Yes. Compile, save. Let's press play. Let's see what's happening now. Yeah. And now, I mean, it should be a little bit smoother, right? We can solve it by just where is my thruster rotation? Here it is. Auto. 
compile, save. There you are. We can close the timelines now. And well, this handle also. And we have a working takeoff and landing. Again, the landing can be polished even more if I just start making more line traces for exactly these cases, right? Where, oh, I shouldn't be able to land here, but because my collision already, well, already collided, then I'm landing there. With four or maybe three line traces, each for one leg, I could make it so I can orient my ship to whatever terrain I'm in. Yeah, so it's looking pretty, pretty good right now. If you have watched the BFX tutorial related to the kit bash content, a nice thing that we can add is the actual particle effects. For example, the thrust. So this is what we're going to add now. We want the thrusters to be in the ship. So here in the viewport, I will find the thrusters and I will create where is my thruster here? I have my thruster selected. I'm going to create a Niagara particle system component. This one will be my constant thrusters. And if the name is a little bit different from the tutorial, just know that it's the one that looks like this. Okay. Now, let's modify it so it can fit and let me put the relative transform so I can make it fit better now it should be let me put the snap back again and rotate it 180 and it should be something like that let's try to put it in the in the correct position so just eyeball it for now something like this could be fine yeah, something like that. Now we also need to duplicate them. Control D and move them to the other raster. Now let's test it a little bit to see if they're working correctly. Let's press play. And yes, they are working correctly. And we can see how the thrusters work. But we do need to enable them and disable them whenever we need them. So for now, I'm going to position them on all the thrusters needed. And I'll put this something like that. You don't need to see me position them. It's the same, the same steps that I already showed you. So let me just pause the video and continue from there. Now we have all the assets, all the particles positioned correctly. And we have something like this. I made a little tweak to the thrusters. Here in the forward range, I change it to 50. Okay, so. I need to make this thruster appear whenever I need them and make them disappear when I don't. So what I will do here in the uh, landing, I will make them disappear. So I need to get all of them. And where should be a good place to put them? Well inside the timeline i can create 
a new track called an event track. Remember that we stopped, we already landed whenever it was 0 0.8. Well, at the time 0 0.9. Value 0, it can be 1 or 0, it doesn't matter. For now, I'll put it 1. I can execute an event. Here is the event. So this event should be called instead of new track stop part uh, thrusters. So here in stop thrusters, I'm going to have to get all the thrusters that I that I want to disable. And here is the end constant thrusters. Two more. In total, there are, I, there are eight. Here are the eight thrusters. And I'm going to put the activate and connect all of them to this node. And this node will only get executed once whenever I stop the thrusters. So let's compile and save. Let's press play and see if this happens. Let's park it. And there they go. They disappear. Now I need them to make them appear whenever I am taking off. So I do need to do something very similar in the other timeline which will be, well, you guessed it, whenever I want to take off, which I believe it's immediately. So be even before I play this, I need two events. One is to fire the start particles, which are these ones, these thruster spawn, and we can see them here. Yes, something very quick. We want to play this while these ones are getting activated. Now, I need to deactivate by default the 8 easy. I have selected Oh, I selected everything. Okay, let's auto activate, put it to false. So now, at this start, we start with no particle. Now, whenever we try to get uh, from the takeoff, then I need to fire immediately the other particles and put all this to something very similar to this, but this one's called. Activate. So it's the same. Let's just connect everything to this one. Just like this. And activate it before playing the timeline. Now let's see what happens. They get activated. Perfect. But that activation seems like a little bit too slow or not suitable for a thruster. We need to also spawn some, um, some of these sparks. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is, again, use a sequence nose. We'll make use of these sequence nodes a lot in order to make our code a little bit more clean. Just like that. So for each one of these, 
I'm going to create and spawn this thruster spawn. This, I believe I already deleted, but that particle that spawns the, th the actual thruster. So I'm going to make an array here, make array. And I'm going to connect all the assets that I have here. I can do this or I can get all components. Well, get components of class. No, I don't have it here. Uh, let's just self. Uh, this nothing get a reference to self this is the one that i was looking for get component and here we should have get components by class this one is going to get all the components of a certain class this class is going to be whatever class this is it niagara particle system component so i need to search niagara component this is it now for each one of these and i could also get rid of this for each one of these for each i want to activate them and let's just reset it Compile and save. Now I should have the same functionality if my logic doesn't fail. Okay, perfect. And now for each one of these, I'm going to spawn a Niagara Assist where attached to what? To this same component. The location, the rotation will be the same. I just need to snap it. And I will include the scale. This will auto activate and I want them to auto destroy also. What is the particle that, that I want to spawn is the thruster spawn. Now let's see what happens. Let's press play. And oh, I believe my engine just crashed. And it seems. Unreal really didn't like my solution. So what I will do instead, because Unreal kind of crashed by but didn't, but at the same time it just hanged my PC and my PC is very pow powerful. So better not use this node uh, here. What I'm going to do is well, I will activate them and. I will need to create the same particles here also. Now, before I do that, I want to see if I can get away with just setting up the particles here. For example, something like this. Set uh, emitter or system. How is it called here? Niagara system asset. Set Niagara system asset. I'll set them to thrust spawn. Let's compile and save. This shouldn't crash anything. Hopefully. I'll press play and the spawn should happen. Yeah, perfect. The spawns happen. Now, after this, I do need to activate the normal thrusters. So, what I'm going to do is actually, first I want these spawns to happen and then I want lift off. So, what better way to use this than a delay? So here, 
let's just remove this sequence. This is what we're going to do. I'm actually excited. I'm going to loop around all the particles. Here, I'm going to set it up as the thrusters. Oh, and here I don't need that. I already have all the elements here. I need to set it up as the thrusters getting launched. And when this is completed, I'm going to create a delay node. Delay. And I should time how much time those particles are in place. Now, I believe I can bind it, bind on event system finish. Yeah, this actually would be would be better. But when they finish, I already want them for I already want the thrusters to be starting, but uh, let's make it the the normal way, okay? So, let's bind on event on system finish. That way whenever these particles are finished, then we don't really need a delay, delay node. We can bind them to a new event, which is custom event on um, thruster spawn finished. And when these particles finish, this is the event, this is the other event that will get triggered. Then I could just play this. Now, let's keep in mind, I'm binding eight of these um, variables. So this will be firing eight times. I could solve it by just getting one of these thrusters and bind it here. Or I can just put here the ones. And be done with it. Now, if I put here do once, then I need to reset it someplace. So, um, I would need another custom event. So, uh, I believe I'll just do what I was going to, that I, I said that I could do. I believe that that will be a, a easier approach. I'll just get one thruster. I don't care. Or is it this one? This one looks good enough. When this thruster, when the system finishes, I will bind into on thruster spawn finish. And why is it not letting me? Oh, it says it's not compatible. If it's not compatible, then you can here add event, add custom event, and it will be created with whatever you need. So here is on raster spawn finish. Now, immediately after calling this event, it would be a good idea to unbind the event. Otherwise, when this thruster stop working, then this will also be called because it's still binding. So we bind it here. As soon as we play it or run it, we unbind event from on system on finish. We can unbind a specific event or we can unbind all events. Let's just unbind an event and this event is this one. So it's unbinding itself. Okay, so now we can do this again. We can do a for each loop, get all the Niagara components. Here it will be constant thrusters, activate them. And when this is finished, which is in the same frame, when this is completed, then we will play from start and have something like this, which I should be really try to. Uh, 
put it a little bit better. Something like this. And I will get this and I will put it here and let me increase the comment box. So now let's test it and then we can go over it. Compile, save, play. I'll spawn them. And after they spawn, then immediately I can do some take. Now I'm not really satisfied with the result. It's yeah, there should already be some oh man. Okay. So you can see what's happening. This gets spawned whenever they finish playing. I change the thrusters and they then I play the normal thruster. But I do need them to overlap. So I will need to revert back most of what I have already done here. So yeah. That's going to be very fun to do. But I want a good end product. So it is something that that I need I need to do now. If you're fine with this development, then you can leave it as it is. It's just a matter of binding an event and when it finishes, we do something else. But in my case, this is not going to cut it. So what can I do? Well, we just need to add here for every thruster uh, let's let me press f what's this oh yeah they start uh, not active for every thruster i need to duplicate it and this instead of being constant thrusters it's the spawn one And I need to remove the constant with the thruster spawn. Compile it. And now, here, I need, do need to change the way this works. No more bindings. We have the play rate. We need to activate everything. But we don't really need to set up nothing. So here, it's a, li a little bit more, th more simple, but it's a little bit more work. We have the play rate. Immediately, we get all the Niagara particles and we acti activate them all. When this is completed, then we will play from start. And well, I can delete everything else. So a little bit more simple in terms of code, but a little bit more of hard work and well it means more components in my blueprint so if we compile and save and press play we can see oh i didn't see it actually where did i put it oh i put it in the left side great yeah we can see how it works if we do need a delay here, maybe we, we want a delay, we can add a delay of 0 0.3. Just so the particles, the particles are working before I go upwards. Yeah, seems, seems pretty nice. 0 0.5 could be a lot better. Yeah, so now it's just a matter of and here in the takeoff, I will change the movement. I will make it a little bit later. It's just a matter of creating these particles. And maybe with this, if I put it in 0 0.4 and I remove the delay, 
maybe I could get a cool effect like when whenever it's trying to get up it spawn those particles yeah yeah actually it's looking pretty cool okay so what I need to do now is go for every one of these thrusters and add its counterpart with this spawning and that's what I'm going to do now so finally I added all the needed particles all the needed particle system and now it is working correctly as it should that seems seems good enough let me park it let me see that everything is getting <laughs> It seems that I forgot a thruster. And if I did forgot a thruster, I can use the same logic here. For this one. Two, two. I, I, I thought I, I had all my thrusters, but... Okay, anyway. There is no harm done. We can solve it. We just need to deactivate everything. So, yeah, it's not that bad, actually. Just like this. And I believe one of my spawn thrusters could be a constant one. I have that slight suspicion. Spawn. Oh, seems like everything's correct. Yeah, well, I, I dubbed it myself. Oh, here it is. Spawn. Constant. Aha. Uh -huh. I had the suspicion. Perfect. Now we can continue. Um, Right there, like, it should fire. At the start, before those uh, those engines start moving, I believe should be should be nice. So it's just a matter of tweaking to to your liking. So if here you want the thruster rotation to be a little a bit more um, faster, or maybe not that fast. I could make it so it start at time 0 0.2. Or 0 0.3. 0 0.2 maybe could be a good idea. Yes. I like it a, a little bit better. Yeah. And yeah, I should kill the engine... A little bit faster so in landing this one should be at 0 0.6 because it takes a while for the thrusters to 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 die so now i can land on it there it is Right, feeling a lot better. Something that I wanted to modify before adding the part of getting into the ship is the camera. Right now, the camera, when we are moving around, there comes a point where I'm looking towards the back of the ship and I don't really like that feeling. I would like to see some of the depth. I could remove a little bit of the tilt forward. But, yeah, it, it would not look as nice. Then, whenever I'm here in the landing, I'm having, having a bit of issues when with the camera that may be too up. Right? So, what I'm going to do is go to the ship blueprint again, the viewport, I'm going to modify the camera again. This camera, which is floating in the air, 
it's connected to the where is my spring arm to the spring arm here i am going to make it a little bit more uh, near the ground so i'll put here 100 i'll press play and see how it's looking now it gives me a better look of the ship i'll put here 500 oh, that was too much 500 let's pray and now it's a lot more grounded and i can see the ship and everything that it's around it but when i'm flying i really don't want to have this view i want my camera to be a little bit higher so what i'm going to do is move my spring arm whenever we are flying like this maybe 150 in c in z would be nice well 1500 and yeah i believe it's it's very nice the tilt works correctly i don't need to modify it and i'm not looking at the back at exactly the back of the ship so yeah this is the value that i will move it how am i moving things well you know it whenever we land i want my let's put a track and i will be using the vertical movement alpha because it reflects the well vertical movement so here I will add the spring arm. Whoops. The spring arm set relative location. I only want to modify the C value. Interpolation. Oh, no, not the interpolation. This is an alpha. So let's just use a LERP linear interpolation. The starting value is. Well, if we are landing, the starting value was 150 and the landing value is zero. So let's connect it like this and the alpha like that to the vertical movement alpha. I'll make some space. Let me just pause the video and do that. So I can fit my new no here and i will do the same i'll just copy it and i will paste it here this also will be moving my c location this is when i'm taking off again vertical movement alpha and the start position is zero so a is zero and b is the end position and again i'll make some some space for for the new code and i will try the new thing that i have added so let's try it compile save play we can move around we can look at the top if i start then my camera also moves with my movement it's pretty nice and if i want to to land then i also get that smooth feeling excellent now the last thing that i need to add is a way of getting inside the ship now i will be using a first person type of character i believe that would suit this asset better type of exploration something like that so first i need to get rid let's click on the ship i need to get rid on the auto possess we want to possess a player that we define so here in the ship i'll create a new folder Call it framework. Inside it, I'll create the rules of the game, which is the game mode. Not only will I put the rules of the game here, 
or let's call it uh, Minerva. But I also define the base classes. Here I will define the default pawn class. So I need a default pawn. I will be adding a feature content pack. I will add the first person and I will add it to the project. Now I have a first person character. And this first person character, I'm going to put it as my default pawn. First person character. Let's compile, save. And the thing about that first person character is that I will be looking at its hands constantly. Where is it? There is state. Yeah, and I don't necessarily want that. So for now, let me just put. Uh, where is it? Hidden in game. Click on the mesh, click on hidden in game. Compile, save it. And let's go back to my map. If I want this map to use my game mode, I can go here, game mode, and game mode override. And select the game mode that I just created. But I want all my project to use that game mode. So here in project settings, game mode, game mode base, I will select my game mode Minerva. I need a place to start my game. Otherwise, when I press play, I will be starting wherever I'm, my camera is at. So I'm going to drag and drop a player start. This player start will be looking towards the ship. So whenever I press play, I'm near the ship. So now I can see my ship and I now I can see what happens when I try to collide with it. And you will see that we are colliding with something here. This is the box collision that our vehicle has. So I don't really want to collide with other pounds. I only want this vehicle to collide with other vehicles. So I can just enter this. Now, I mean... There is no harm done, really done with this one. I need to do that in order for to enter it. So here, I'll just open my ship. I'll go to my viewport. Here in ship box collision, in vehicles, I will ignore the pawn. I'll press play. And now I will try to overlap with that box collision. And I can't. But I can over, overlap. Well, no. I, I am blocked by the meshes inside of this ship. Now, why can I not enter here? Well, we can check it out, actually. Here, we can see the collision for the visibility. So uh, it's pretty, pretty accurate, but we can also check the collision for the player. And we see that this specific mesh has a, has a collision that doesn't really help. So I need to see what's happening with that collision. Let's go again, player collision. I will select this, uh, the ship. Open it here again, and I will select this mesh and I will open it. Control E, or if that doesn't work, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't inside the blueprint editor. I can go to the static mesh and double click on it. Here, I will be able to see the collision. So, show simple collision, and here is what preventing me from entering the ship. So to avoid this, I can just remove the collision. Remove collision. I can add a box simplify collision. And this one I can modify to my parts content. So let me just remove the the scale snapping and do something like this. 
Now it's just a matter of rotating it and placing it inside the image. This will give me the collision for this mesh. Uh, that's what that was too much. A little bit bigger, just a little bit. And from the sides, yeah, it's not exactly perfect, but I do need to rotate it this way. Perfect. Now I need to duplicate it, so Control D as always, and move it around. And this could be a good place actually. Rotate it, and now we are cooking. Doesn't need to be perfect actually. It's fine like this. Let's save. And let's see what's happening now. Yeah, there is still some weird collision inside it. So let's see what's that all about in the ship. This ramp. Let's open it by double clicking here. And let's see the collision. Yeah, the collision is pretty weird. I don't know why, why, why it's like that. But let's just remove the collision. Remove collision. And create a box simplify collision uh, maybe this is not the best collision i'll just remove it by uh, pressing the delete key let's create a 26 mm, yeah no i'm not convinced either let's just put a box collision and rotate it rotate it like this and scale it like that Yeah, rotate it here. I mean, I won't care too much if I lose some of this. Some of that collision because there, there is also another mesh there. So yeah, I won't get too bothered about it. Let's save it. Let's see the map. And now we have something. And oh, why, why is, is that part like that? Uh, let me open it also and fix the collision yep that's not how it should be so let let me select it remove it add a box simplify collision and do the same step again there it goes perfect save it now it's looking a lot better let's see if i can get inside it now Let's press play. And I should be able to easily get up until this point. Here, I really don't want to get inside it because if you just peek inside this ship, you will see that this is not, this is not uh, the scale of our character. This is definitely too small and there is nothing inside the cockpit. So yeah, you don't really want to go inside it. Here I will create a trigger that will let you board the ship. So with that being said, let's let's do that. Let's open the ship. And let's create here in the ship collision box. Let's create a, another box collision. Here is a box collision. Let me move it. Uh, let me rename it and trigger box. And move it here. This trigger box will be a little bit bigger. Let's just put 200 by 400. 400 was too much. 300 by maybe 200. Perfect. 
this will be here. And whenever my player gets near this, a message will pop up. This message will be a simple text renderer. Here, let me put it this way and rotate it. Let me get my snapping back for the rotation. Here it is. Uh, put the text in the center. Increase the text size. Uh, maybe 40, um, uh, 50. And the text will be press F to board. This will be hidden in game. And I will make it appear every time you go inside the trigger box. So this trigger box, we need to check out its collisions. Here, collision, collision presets. I'm going to create a trigger. Could be this, could also be overlap only pawn. Both of them are fine. I'll just leave it as a trigger. Now, let's just right click here, add an event, begin overlap. And when we begin overlap, overlapping this event, I want to show the text renderer. Set hidden in game to new hidden false. And whenever we end the overlap, then for sure, this set hidden must be true. Let's test this part to see if the trigger is actually working. Let's go here and that should be false. Yeah, and it works. The text is too, too high for my taste. I don't know if the ship is too big or maybe the, the player I have is too small, but something weird is happening. And uh, hidden in game, this is true. So maybe this is firing. Let's press print. And here I'll put hello, press play. And it is being triggered by something. So I will need to check that this is actually a character. The way I can do it here in other actor, let me just cast to a character. And yeah, that's pretty much all the validation I need to do here for now. Just so this part works correctly. Okay, now let's compile again. Play. There is no text here. I'll get inside it. And again, the text is too, too high. Let me put the text a little bit lower and the box. Where is my trigger box? Also a bit, a little bit lower. Yeah, there you go. Now it should be fine. The, the the height should be should be fine. There you go. Press F to board. So I want to board this. If I want to board this, I need to enable the input inside this blueprint. This is not exactly a good practice, or well, it's also not exactly a bad practice. But I mean, this is not usually how the input is given. I have seen it in a lot of Unreal Engine training because it's an easy and understandable way of doing it. But if you later on want to scale this a little bit for any type of vehicle, then you will need to rewrite a little bit of the code. But this video is long enough, so let's do it the epic way. We can enable the input. Enable input. Which player controller? My current character. Well, my current player controller. So get player controller. When I leave this, I want to disable the input. So here, 
instead of enable, well, disable. And again, connect the player controller. What this allows us is that here, before getting the pound, well, before getting this player controller to possess this pound, we can start triggering some inputs, for example, that interact one that I believe I had here. This interact input, I will put a hello here, just to say that it is working. Let's press play, and again, let's run to the ship. I believe that I was closer, but... Okay, F. Oh, and of course, it's not working. Okay, so, it doesn't work. I usually don't do that type of implementation. Uh, and it seems that it only works with actors. So, that's why this being a pawn doesn't work in my favor. So I do need to change the way everything's working. Now, let's do it like in a production style way. We already have a game mode. This game mode, here I already set up the first person character. And I can also set up the player controller class. So let's create one. I'll press plus, find my, cara my folder, which is... Was it mission to no the it, ship tutorial framework and I'll create my player controller player controller uh, Minerva player save I have my player controller here in my player controller I will have the event um how did I call it interact interact yeah yeah interact interact there it is now here what i can do is precisely the the implementation whenever i'm in possessing a first person character or whenever i'm possessing a ship so let's just remove the interact from the ship because it doesn't matter who i'm possessing the player controller stays the same. So that's why this is a better approach to just enabling some input inside a character or actor. Okay, so we need to possess the ship, right? And we also need to know if we are inside the first person character. So whenever I press this button, the first thing that I want to know, and let me check if I just input action mapping I put the F, right? Yes, I put it. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. So let's check before if we are in a character or if we are in the ship. So to check if we're in a character, I can, from the player controller, get the controlled actor. Controlled, oh, well, pawn. If we're controlling something, it's not an actor, it's a pawn. Get control pawn. I'm going to cast it to a character. If this is true, I'm in the first person character. If this is false, I mean whatever else that is not a character. So in our case, it will be a ship or a vehicle or something else. Okay, if I'm inside a character, what I want to do is possess the vehicle. Here, I will save and a variable, and this will be the mm, pound to possess. And this is just a pawn. And also, let's remember, a character is also a pawn. It's a child of the pawn. The pawn is a child of the actor. Okay, so let's just put here pawn, pawn to possess. If this is valid, then for sure, possess it is valid. And to possess this pawn is very simple, just possess. 
There it is. Now, let's make it work. We need to make this variable be valid. So we need to fill it with something. Here in the ship, we have this on component begin overlap. So what I'm going to do instead of just enabling the input is get the controller, cast it to my controller that I created. And from here, I'm going to set up the pound to control. Pound to possess. Which is the pound to possess? This one. Self. And whenever I get out of the end overlap, I need to clean the variable, so I'll just send in nothing. Compile, save it. Let's test it. First, let's test it by entering the trigger, going outside of it, pressing F, nothing happened. Go inside the trigger, press F, and now we are inside the 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 actual uh, chip. Now, what happens if I press F right now? I can't. But what I can do is, well, add the logic to be able to unpossess this character. The first thing that I need to do is, well, go to the player controller, attach my first person character to the new possessed character. Now, I will lose the reference to the first person character as soon as I possess another pawn. So if this is valid, then and I will just copy and paste it like this so I have more space in between. Before possessing the pawn, what I'm going to do is attach my character. So let's get my control pawn. Let's remove the collision. So set actor. Uh, Set enable collision false. Right? And now I will attach it to my to my character. If this pawn had a mesh, it would be a good idea to also set hidden in game a new hidden true. Now let's attach it. Attach actor to act which are the actors that I want to attach. Well, here, the parent actor is the pound to possess, the target is the control pound, and I will make it keep world in everything. And I will weld the simulated body. That way, I will be carrying around my, well, my my actor if i needed an animation then for sure this would need to change i would need to play the animation of getting inside the the ship or something like that but in my case it's really simple you, you just hide it and then we possess it now after possessing it i do want to save a reference to my character so um default character i will call it and this will be default character refer ref from reference and this also ref and this is a character so i can choose a character here character object reference and here i will save it before possessing it so default character just like this and it's the get control pawn. Right now, uh, it's a pound, so yeah, let's again change it to pound. A character is a pound, so I mean, it's really not that big of a deal. Change variable. Oh man, let's wait for this. Uh, yeah, I'm only referencing referencing it here, man. Here default. Oh, whoops. 
where is my get control pawn? I'll copy and paste it here. And after doing this, I will possess it. Here, I'm in control of the ship. Now, what should happen if I'm in control of the ship? Then this will fail. If this fails, I want to know if I'm in the ship. So, pawn possess. Oh, well. Now it's the control pawn. And I will cast it to my ship. Why? Because I want to know if I am flying or not. I do not want to get out of the ship if I'm flying. So I will get the state. I will make sure that this is equal to on land. And now let's just possess the cara. And we need to invert whatever we did here. What we need to do is um, possess the new pawn, which was the old character, default character, perfect. Now we need to detach it like we have here. Detach from actor. Again here, keep world, keep world, keep world. Perfect. We need to um, set actor here in game. And we can use this default character ref or we can just... Oh, well, 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 wait a minute. Here, we do need to use the default character ref. Here, we can use the get control pawn because it already changed. Okay, so we have detached it. Set the actor hidden in game and the collision. Connect it to the get control pawn. And here, new hidden is false and actor enable collision is true. And that's that's pretty much it. Let's see if this works. I need to test it actually. So file save all because I have seen some stuff that was not saving. Let's press play. Let's get inside the ship. Let's board it. Oh, nothing happened. Oh man, did I broke it already? Here, pawn to possess, default character. Is the control pawn. Pawn. What happened? Okay, so what's happening is that whenever we disable the collisions here, we are immediately unpossessing the. Uh, well, we're immediately. Where is my ship? Triggering the end overlap, which removes my pawn to possess, and here this value gets nulled and nothing happens so i believe the order does affect the 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 result so i will put this first so the default character ref to use is saved then we possess and then we just use the default character ref for everything else Also, this means that by doing this in enable collision, immediately this pawn to possess is getting cleaned. So it's actually a good thing. Now let's try it with the new and better code. Let's press play. Let's go to the ship. Let's press F to board. Now we're in the ship. Let's go upwards. Let's move around. There's not that much to see. So now I will be descending. Now here I can press F. Oh, I put a breakpoint here. Don't worry about that. And now I'm back here. So again, 
I can board. Let's not get interrupted by a breakpoint. And I can unboard by pressing F again. Yeah, pretty nice. Actually, pretty, pretty nice. F and here you have it. I'm out of out of there. And if I'm moving around in the ship or taking off or landing, I cannot press F until it finishes. Yes. Perfect. So here, uh, let me see that everything's working correctly. Enable collision, detach. Yeah. Yes, a solid, solid logic. If you need to do a specific stuff whenever you want to onboard or well get out of the of the ship, you could also put this interact button and put some logic here in the first person character and break the other part of the logic here in the ship. It, it's also fine to do. Whatever suits your game. And your experience or whatever you feel it's right for you then you should use that but at least with this part of the video you know a way to do it let's do the last bit of polishing i just noticed that in the folder that my my vfx artist our good pal guillermo here we have two extra particles. One is a dust particle and one is a dust start. So one is the impact and the other is the constant. So you can see the dust that is floating around. So I believe that the idea of those particles is that whenever we are inside the the, the ship, we turn on the thrusters and then immediately those dust particles start appearing. At least that's what I what I think he he intended. So yeah, let's make them. I mean, the video is already long enough. Why not spend a few, maybe 15 minutes? 15, no, not 50. I won't be able to make it if it is 50. So yeah, because I'm going to be testing the ship a lot, again, I will enable the auto possess. So whenever I press play, immediately I'm inside the ship. And the way that I'm going to spawn these particles are in the, where is my ship? Wherever, whenever I'm land, no, landing, no, uh, taking off. Take off, we had this timeline. And just like in the other one, that we can stop the thrusters, we can enable some particles. So here, whenever the... Uh, here I remove that, that delay. Whenever my thrusters are started, let's double click it and add a new track, event track, uh, new start dust. And this will be similar to this one. Maybe 0 0.5 would be 0. <laughs> 0.25 would be a good value. Doesn't matter the the value, it will still trigger is an event curve. So now we have this. And here is the mm, it's not the funny part, but we already know how to do line traces, right? So we just need to do another one. Line trace. We need to hit the floor. Line trace. Not for objects by 
channel. Visibility channel, more than enough. And I need to do one for each thruster. Now the thrusters, very conveniently, have their sync component. But this sync component doesn't really give me uh, the correct location. The correct location is given by the actual thruster. And not even that, it's even more correct for the constant thruster. So I will be using this one. I'll get this constant thruster, ask for the word location. And here, I need to add some value in the direction of this thrust. So get forward vector, multiply it by a distance. For now, let's just multiply it by convert pin float, multiply it by a thousand. And now let's see if this works. The ratio. Visibility, this is fine. I want to see if the direction is okay. And it's not okay. It's going upwards. So let's negate that number. And it's still not okay. So maybe the forward vector of this faster may not be the thing that I'm looking for. No, but... Oh, let's get the up vector. C is the up. Let's just get the up vector. Instead of the forward, get up vector and use that. Let's not negate the number and let's see if this works. Come on. Yeah, it works. Great. Oh, so great. Now, whenever this hits, I do need to create that emit. And for that, I will be um, Let's say, yeah, let's just spawn the system at location. This out hit, well, this needs to be true. Otherwise, we hit nothing, and then I'm creating this without a reason. And here, break the result. Here, location. And yeah, everything else should be fine. The template is the dust impact. Now let's see what's happening. Come on, don't crash. Yeah, we had the dust impact. Perfect. And yeah, it's actually pretty nice. I need to do this for the four thrusters. Now, because I'm always trying to work smart, not hard, I will move everything a little bit down. And here, instead of duplicating this part of the code, I will just do a for each loop. This will be the code that will be inside the for each loop. And the thing that I want to get out of this for each loop is this constant thrust. So for now, let's just remove that, make this into an array, make array, 
and connect this here. Now, hopefully, creating a spawn, a spawning a system at the location doesn't crash my game. It has already done it before, but let's see if I'm lucky enough to pull this off. Let's create four because there are four thrusters. This is the first one. This is the second one. The third one. And uh, I'm missing one. Hopefully it's this one. <laughs> yeah, I believe it is. I believe it is. Here I will alignment straighten the connections come on there it is okay so for each one of these thrusters i will create this line trace and if it hits something i will create the dust impulse come on don't crash it worked i didn't expect that was so I was really hoping it didn't crash. So, yeah, pretty nice. I have the smokes. Well, the dust. Now, what I need to do is the same but different. If you can call it like that. For the actual uh, landing. So, I'll just copy and paste this code, go to my landing, and here. Just like stop the thrusters, I'll create an event track. Um, start dust. And this will be maybe at what time could it be? Uh, maybe at the start 0 0.5 or 4. 0 0.4. Now let's see what happens. Perfect. Now I'll go down. Oh, where's the dust? Didn't hit anything, I believe. Let me move. Yeah, what happened? Oh, I have not connected it, right? Yes, I only created the event. Oh, man. I'm starting to fall asleep but don't worry we will finish this before i go to sleep otherwise i won't be able to continue this tutorial okay now let's see if it is working if it is not then i just need to increase this range that's it let's get up let's go down nice 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 now this is working. Duration, let's put it to none. And here, duration, let's put it to none. Just so I'm seeing the effect. The only thing that I would need to check is if I get too near. Oh no, come on, what happened there? I didn't see the particle effects. Come on, show me them. Show it, yes. I need to increase the the actual um uh, come on this is the takeoff here is the landing here is the landing here it is increase it a little bit because the landing could take a little bit more time so what I would be missing that I don't believe I'm I'm missing right now because I kind of fixed it with my approach of landing is the actual dust of my of my ship. Why? Because right now there is no way of using the the dust constant because whenever I get close enough to the 
to the land. I just uh, park. Yeah, so if I go here, I'm just parking it. So I don't really need to worry too, too much about it. Now, in the case that I do want to use these dust particles, what can I do? Let's just do that case. For example, let's say I'm flying near the the, the map, right? Something like this. And I want those thrust. Oh, my thruster are not even in a in a good location for them. Oh man, I really Okay, let me show you how, how we do it. Let me just remove the functionality to land. So here in check if we should land. Let me just disable it. Like this. So now I can't land. Right? I can't I can go as near to the ground as I want to, but I cannot land. If you want to use those dust particles that hopefully Guillermo covers in his tutorial, um, what you could do and what I would do is do not spawn them. They are constant particles. Also, those dust particles need to follow the ship. So what I would do is just like we did here. And uh, where is my back thruster back right? Here, I'll just duplicate this. It really doesn't matter. Uh, let's call it dust particles. And let's put the constant. Dust constant. Now it is fine that this is not out activated. Now what I would do is while I am flying around, I will do the same trace code. That I had here. I won't be using the array, I will be using just this part, the trace code. I'll copy this, I'll paste it here, and I will add it to only work when I'm flying. And could be while I'm flying, or uh, could be always, right? Yeah, it could be always, except when I'm already landing. So what can I do here? Sequence. And here I would need to validate if this is equal. No, if this is not landing. And here I have an if. If we have not landed, then for sure run this trace code. Now this trace code that I will only do for one of them. I could do it for all of them, but uh, let's just stick to one. It's a proof of, co of concept. The same thing, the same code. Let's put it to one frame. And this should be a little bit bigger, maybe 200. Okay, let's try it. Right now it's not doing anything, right? But now I can see exactly where my thrusters are pointing, right? So I can know exactly when the dust should be, oh, not when, where the dust should be. So with this hit, if this is true, I will be using this dust particle. I will be setting the word for location and here in the out hit let's break it let's get the location and again let's hide the, everything else now if i press play this won't work yet because we have not tell these dust particles to get activated so let's tell them to get activated in order to do that, we need to check. 
And because we're going to do a check within a check, we always want to run this. So first, let's do another sequence. Let's organize our nodes. This always gets run, but this part, if my dust particles uh, get active, oh, I cannot know if they are active or not. Mm, here it is, is active. If it is not active then i want to activate them if i don't validate this then they will get activated every frame and i won't see anything or maybe my engine can crash so here active set active ah come on activate there you have it. And you can reset it. And then we will be um, showing the location, the new location. If this is false, if I'm not colliding with anything, then again, I need to do this. If they are active, then deactivate. Just like this. Let's press play. And let's see what's happening now. Now if I get near, we can see those smoke particles. If it's not colliding with anything, then nothing happens. But if it is, then there are the smokes. Now, let's try activating the, the landing. Let's see if this works or not. I mean, it's working fine enough. Let's land somewhere. Oh, it's actually pretty nice. I'll leave it there. Oh, oh man. So now I, ca I should implement it. Okay, okay. Let's implement it. Let's implement it for everything. And uh, yeah, this part is okay. We do need it to run this way. We need to extend this code to every uh, dust particle that can be created by our thrusters. Okay, so let's uh, let's just do it. And again, I'll, I'll deactivate the, the landing because it, it seems like it's a pretty cool stuff. Okay, we do need to do the same thing here with the dust particles component. You already see me do it. I'll just duplicate it. I'll have four of these dust particles. There, I did it. We have four of them. Okay, let's make this logic extendable to whatever thrusters we have. We do need the thrusters. We really don't need to match it. I mean, it would be nice, but let's... Okay, let's try to match it. Here. This only runs if we are not on the land. So, for each. Now I need to make an array. Here. Make the array. This is not the node. Make array. Again, four thrusters. So, four items. And this element will be the one that will be going inside of this location. And I will put this here. Okay. So far, so good. We do need the thrusters. Thruster 1. Oh, where is thruster? Let's just search for it. Thruster. Okay. Constant thruster 5. This is the first one, so let's make it match with the dust that is inside it. Oh, come on, 
let's just search ns from the okay now i see it so thruster files matches with thrust with dust 2 okay so perfect dust 2 is here again make an array of this you will see why for thrusters for dusts so again here four elements perfect now next one hey man next one. um thruster five thruster one thruster one i already have here and this matches with dust particle one perfect next one is dust three with matches with thruster six and the next one is thruster three which match with dust four okay that's that's it basically and now let me just rearrange this. Okay. So now the first element enters and I need to work with the first, with the index, with the same index, with the same element that matches my dust. So here I will get array index. Just like that. Pretty simple. And this will replace wherever it says dust particles one so here replaced here replaced here replaced and here active replaced and well this one also now i just need to delete the dust particle one that was floating around and that's pretty much it I mean, it may not look really fancy right now, but let's test if it is working at least. Let's press play. And as soon as I take off, I have the four line trace. And yeah, it is actually working. If I get lower, I can see it a lot better. And if I get upwards and stop touching it, then it's working fine. What I want to know if is if maybe it's too much of a distance for this dust to appear. And I believe it is. So maybe a little bit less. 150. Should be fine. Now I can remove the debug. Here I'll put none. I will make sure to make this a lot prettier. Let me just pause the video here we have it as i said a little bit more prettier and here i'll put a comment box saying that this controls the dust that continues dust again why are um, am i not spawning them is because i mean for sure we don't really need them always, but we will be spawning them a lot if every time I collide with the ground, I need them. So I might, might as well have it inside my blueprint. And this, how can I put this inside my, my logic? Uh, yeah, this, this is, this is fine. Yeah, I believe this is fine. And here, because I'm only using the flying, actually, I can replace it by if this is equal to flying. I really didn't need the switch. So here, if flying, I'll connect it like this. Make it a little bit more readable. Just like that. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's basically it. 
Um, let's compile, save it. Uh, let me add again the ability to land. And now let's see that everything is working correctly. And now this is bugging me. Where, where is it? Show it to me. Here it is. Just delete this particle. Perfect. Now, let's see what's happening. If I go downwards a little bit, I should be able to see the smoke. And also, when I try to park my ship. Park the ship. To land with my ship. Yeah, and yeah, it's actually pretty nice. If I'm moving very fast downwards, then I can see some of the smoke appearing. Yeah. I I love it. It ended up very, very nicely. As you have seen, we have learned a lot of blueprints, of working with assets, third-party assets, and also working with BFX. So that's it for today's video. Make sure to subscribe if you want to learn more about Unreal Engine, and if you like this type of video, do give them a like and share them around. Thanks for watching and see you next time.